Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about the clinical conditions resulting from trauma and pathology and this is going to be the second part of the unit number one so let's get into it. First of all we have the dysfunction and dysfunction is basically the dis means that so this is the bad function or you can say the loss of the normal function of a tissue or the region. And this is caused by adaptive shortening of the soft tissue, adhesions, muscle weakness. So these all can result in the dysfunction as well as any condition that results in the loss of the normal mobility. So this can also contribute to the dysfunction. Then we have the joint dysfunction. Now this is basically a specific term that is referring to the joints only. So here in this case, what we can see is that there is a mechanical loss of the normal joint play and it occurs in the synovial joints. What are the factors that can result in the joint dysfunction? So there can be the trauma or immobilization, disuse, aging or any kind of pathology for example the rheumatoid arthritis. So these all are the factors and these joint dysfunctions can result in the inflammation and pain. Then we have the contracture and as you know that contracture is what? It is the adaptive shortening of the skin, of the muscle, fascia or it can also be of the joint capsule. Then this contracture prevents the normal mobility or the flexibility of the structure in which it is occurring. Then we have adhesions. So the name is telling you that adhesions is basically when the collagen fibers of a particular structure are abnormally adhered to the collagen fibers of the surrounding structures. So these adhesions can result from the immobilization, trauma or the complication of the surgery and these all the factors can result in the restriction of the normal elasticity and the gliding of that structure. For example, if there is an adhesion of the muscles, definitely it cannot be as elastic as it was and it cannot glide as easily as it used to. Then we have the reflex muscle guarding. So the reflex muscle guarding is basically as the name is telling you that when the muscles are going to guard themselves so that the painful stimulus cannot be increased or so as to prevent the worsening of the condition. So the reflex muscle guarding is the prolonged muscle contraction in response to a painful stimulus. And this painful stimulus can result from the lesion that can be nearby or in the underlying tissues. And it can also be a referred pain. It means that the pain arising from some other location. If it is not a referred pain, if the pain is in that particular region, so when this pain is relieved, the guarding would ultimately cease. Intrinsic muscle spasm. Now what is this intrinsic muscle spasm? In some cases, the reflex muscle guarding can also result in the intrinsic muscle spasm as I've discussed before in the first part of this video. So here you can see now uh, this is basically also the prolonged muscle contraction but it is in response to the local circulatory and the metabolic changes that which are resulted when there is continued muscle contraction. As you know that we have the local circulatory and metabolic changes so this is also going to cause the pain so the patient would experience the pain because of it. Now let's see how the reflex muscle guarding can result in the intrinsic muscle spasm. So the reflex muscle guarding as you know that it is in response to the painful stimulus. So for example if there was a pain, so the pain would cause a prolonged muscle contraction. This would also cause the local circulatory and the metabolic changes. And these changes would later on if they are not corrected on time. So these are going to lead to the prolonged muscle contraction and that is what is referred to as the intrinsic muscle spasm. Then these intrinsic muscle spasms they are self-perpetuating. Why they are self-perpetuating? Let us understand from this diagram. Now here you can see that as the trauma, pain, inflammation, infection, emotional tension, cold and the immobilization they are all the causes of reflex muscle contraction. Now when there is reflex muscle contraction, they are going to restrict the movement and if there is no movement, so definitely there would be decreased uh, blood flow. So here you can see their circulatory stasis and this circulatory stasis would, uh, can later cause the tissue ischemia and retention of the metabolites. It means that the waste are going to be deposited in that area and which are going to in turn cause pain and this pain is going to cause the muscle spasm. And this muscle spasm, once 
uh, it has occurred so this is going to cause the restricted movement again and this cycle is carried on so this is how it is self perpetuating so as we discussed before the factors of the intrinsic muscle spasm can be viral infection cold immobilization direct trauma or the emotional tension okay that we have the muscle weakness and weakness as you know that it is it always refers to the decrease in strength so the muscle weakness means that there is decrease in strength of the muscle contraction and why is this so so this results from the systemic chemical or it can be any factor like the nerve lesion as you know that the nerves are present in the cns in the pns so if there is any kind of nerve injury nerve lesion so this can also result in the muscle weakness because you know that the nerves are responsible for the muscle contraction for stimulating the muscles so that they can contract and as well as the lesions of the myo neural junction so myo neural junction is basically the muscle and the neurons where they are coordinating with each other so as to cause the contraction of the muscles then the direct injury can cause the muscle weakness and inactivity can also result in the muscle weakness now we have the myofascial compartment syndrome as you know that a uh, lower limb is also divided into many compartments thighs there are many compartments so basically what is a compartment compartment is a closed space and it's a non expanding space so if there is increased interstitial pressure in the compartment so definitely it would compress the nearby structures in this way this would compromise the function of the muscles nerves and the vessels surrounding the compartment and in this way if it is not treated so this can result in the ischemia and because of ischemia the muscles can be lost so there can be a muscle loss now what can be the cause of the myofascial compartment syndrome so these are the causes but these are not limited to only these causes it means that there can be many other causes as well of the myofascial compartment syndrome so some of the causes are here like it can be because of the fracture repetitive trauma crush injuries skeletal traction and the restrictive clothing for example if you have tightly uh, wounded a cloth around your joint or around any limb this compression can also result in the myofascial compartment syndrome then the wraps and the casts so in these things also uh, there is compression of the limbs so this can also result in the myofascial compartment syndrome okay guys i hope this is informative for you all and in this video we have discussed about the clinical conditions resulting from trauma and pathology and in the next video we are going to be discussing about the severity of the tissue injury and the irritability of the tissues which includes the stages of inflammation and repair thanks for watching